So, so hang on, are you saying that um, out of all of the Sahaba, thousands? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousands, yeah. only seven, these seven. Only these seven were faqih. Okay. So no one else would give fatwas. Like, so if I went, or if another Sahaba went yeah. to someone, or Tabin went to a Sahaba and mm. said, what do you say about alcohol or this fermenting which is not turned yeah, down. They, they won't say so no. go to one of these guys yeah exactly okay and who you said there's 20 others also there, there's about uh, roughly 20 hmm. uh, more hmm. they would give uh, ijtihad or rulings hmm. on specific uh, rulings so maybe they talk about prayer or exactly but not everything no so these guys were like uh, they the, were the, like experts Abu Hanifa. On, in the exactly, later generation. Exactly. Okay. So, so can, can I just, again, so for example, how our Salafi brothers, they say, as long as I can trace an opinion back to Salaf, mm -hmm. that's it, finished. But mm -hmm. for example, not every Sahaba would even have an opinion. Like, no, so no, does, no. Yeah, they, okay. they, they would just, uh, they would not speak. Hmm. And or they would uh, tell you just uh, go to this person. And um, also these people, they were uh, specifically sent to certain areas like uh, Basra, uh, Kufa, hmm. Egypt, like uh, so, uh, or Sham, hmm. uh, Medina, Mecca, and in these areas, uh, they uh, what they did is they established a a certain uh, school, hmm. and they start teaching there, and the the knowledge started like. Um, uh, spreading from these uh, schools in a way like a university like how East. Hassan al-Ashri was in one area Maturidi was different. Oh, okay that that is later on later here right. we are at, at the moment uh, we are at the uh, Sahabi, beginning right yeah. yeah so and then um, like uh, as you can see like three Abdullahs hmm. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Abdullah ibn Abbas Abdullah ibn Amr hmm. they, they are here hmm. okay and also Zayd bin uh, Thabit here, and Hazrat Umar and Hazrat Ali radiallahu hmm. For example, Hazrat Abu Bakr hmm. radiallahu an, um, uh, he was not a faqih. Do you see that? Hmm. So if someone would come to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he would refer um, uh, that person to either like Hazrat Umar radiallahu an, or some other uh, faqih. Isn't that quite shocking for like most Muslims because they 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 would think maybe you're taking the rank away from Hazrat Abu Bakr or something. No, Hazrat Abu Bakr, um, he he was um, uh, greater in other like let's say sciences of mm -hmm, Islam. Mm -hmm. For example, um, like uh, tasawuf. Mm. You know when we say tasawuf, like uh, the Jibril Hadith. Mm. What is Iman? What is Islam? Mm. What is Ihsan? So in terms of like Ihsan and Sidq, mm. which is, you know, the, the, the affirmation, like uh, there was no match to Hazrat Abu Bakr See. in that specific uh, ilm. And if you look at the, the, um, the uh, like Sufi tariqas, which are authentic, not uh, the deviant ones, uh, they, uh, their lineage, um, goes back to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, most yeah. of them, hmm. and also uh, some of them they go to Hazrat Ali radiallahu. Okay. And uh, so this is very very important. So in debating or uh, dialogue with non-Muslims, if a non-Muslim was to bring up in a debate, um, for example, Hazrat Uthman did X or Hazrat Uthman commanded Y. Is it legitimate for us to say mm. that, um, firstly, we need to understand all of the context and stuff, mm -hmm. but would it be legitimate for a Muslim debater to say um, but Hazrat Uthman was not one of those who did independent reasoning on juristic type things, so you need to refer to one of these seven? Would that be fair to they say? They, um, they would not uh, take a decision on their own. They, they had a shura. So he would consult with yes. and these guys yes. would be in okay. Even like, for example, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anh, he would ask, uh, you know, the other Sahab, like mm -hmm. uh, Ubay bin Ka'b, for example, mm. and uh, he would ask their opinion. Hazrat Abu Bakr, radiallahu anh, in most uh, of the cases, he asked Hazrat Umar, radiallahu anh, or uh, Abdurrahman uh, bin Auf, who was mm. also another, like, great <coughs> scholar. Because, so, uh, mm. uh, forgive me, my understanding of uh, uh, maybe some of uh, the non-Madhabi groups, mm -hmm. um, they say 
uh, that, for example, let's say I have an opinion like mm-hmm. I'm reading eight records in Tarawi. Let's just say hypothetically okay, some yeah, opinion. Right. And when I say, but no madhab has this, but they say, aha, but Sahaba or Tabain or Salaf X, Y, Z did do it. Therefore, it's valid. Mm-hmm. So even if it's not consensus, or, but just because one guy did it. Now, I did hear some other piece. So is that, that is not correct methodology? No, like, um, first of all, um, okay, the, the example that you just gave is um, we need to be more specific. Hmm. Secondly, what we see here is that um, uh, Sahabi, although they had uh, knowledge mm-hmm. and uh, they lived under Islam, mm. they would not go uh, and, and uh, find a verse from Quran <coughs> or hadith that they heard from Prophet Muhammad and start like, you know, uh, acting on it. Okay. They would go and ask someone who's more knowledgeable. Mm. And in this case, for example, these seven Sahaba. For example, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu, on many occasions they went and asked Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha. Hmm. So she was a faqih. Oh, so is she on that list? Yes. So uh, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, one of the wisdoms that she was chosen uh, as a wife to the Prophet Muhammad sallam was so she would be educated at an early age. Hmm. And she would become a, a mercy for uh, the generations to come. Hmm. And uh, we learned like um, two thirds of this religion from Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, and uh, uh, especially like um, the rulings regarding uh, women hmm. and uh, sisters. Hmm. Um, the Hazrat Aisha uh, radiallahu anha was so pivotal in 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 that sense. Okay. Um, so, um, oh, and then, uh, as I told told you, like you know, these uh, Sahabi, they were on in, in uh, they were sent to particular locations, and then they started like um, uh, teaching Islam in in these places, and uh, so for example, Abdullah bin Mas'ud was in Kufa, hmm. okay, so um, so he was teaching from there, and uh, so f- through him, uh, like uh, Al Qama. Hmm. was from Tabi'in. Hmm. He learned. And then, uh, so, and then, you know, from Al-Qama, um, you have Ibrahim al Nahai and then uh, Suleyman ibn Hamad, and then, you know, it goes. So there's a lineage, and uh, Hazrat, um, okay, Imam Abu Hanifa was also uh, from that lineage. Hmm. So Imam Abu Hanifa, he's uh, like, uh, l- his uh, a chain, goes back to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and also has a Tu'amah radiallahu anhu. So uh, he did not make up uh, his own, you know, rulings, this, that. So that's kind of, you know, yeah, misunderstanding. And so under these uh, sahab, uh, like companions of Prophet Muhammad there were many tabi'een. Hmm. And, you know, uh, uh, these tabi'een, they were educated. And the most interesting thing is, you know, uh, there were many slaves from these tabi'een. You know, some scholars say that uh, the ummah learn Islam from the slaves. Subhanallah. You see, um, the, in the history of like mankind, there has never been a group of people who were slaves, but as a slave, they were celebrities they were on top of many people hmm. thousands of people they would come to see them in hmm. awe so uh, this is very key thing um so uh, some of these uh, like uh, tabi'in like for example Sa'id uh, bin al musayyab and um, and uh, al qasim bin muhammad hmm. so the, these tabi'ins, for example, if we see them in the chain of rea- uh, reactions in the hadith, hmm. these are called like a thiqa or thiqatun, uh, thiqa or thiqatul hujja. They're like so reliable. And we know their like history, um, like their life so well. Okay. So, for example, um, Imam Nafi'ah. Hmm. 
where you know the uh, Qiraat comes from, like uh, the the verse. Um, yeah, so the, um, Imam Nafi'ah. Um, so Warsh and Qalun uh, Riwayat comes from So um, he was in Medina So he was teaching from Medina And uh, like uh, for example Hamad bin Abi Sulaiman So um, He was uh, one of the teachers Of you know Imam Abu Hanifa like, uh, So grand teachers Like also uh, Al-Khama bin Qais Ibrahim al Nahai. So these people uh, They were in Kufa Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, He was in Basra and then Sufyan bin Uyayna, he was in uh, Mecca. So Malik ibn uh, Anas, he was in Medina. And Ahmed bin Hanbal, he was in Baghdad. Okay, Dawud al Zahiri, so he was also in, in uh, Baghdad. Ibn Jarir al Tabari. And then in Nishabur, we have Ishaq bin Rahuya. Yeah, he was an amazing muhaddith, one of the best. Okay, and um, so he was in Nisabur. Yeah. So in Egypt, we have Imam Shafi'a, rahimahullah, and also Layth, uh, Layth bin Sa'ad. In Sham, we have uh, Al-Awza'i. And uh, so all these people, you see how the knowledge is distributed. And uh, so, and all these uh, people, they were like a mujtahid. But, um, we, but not all of them uh, were like... Um, specialized in everything every one of them has a certain like speciality ex like no there's not one person hmm. who is good in everything hmm. and uh, so like we need to really uh, understand that clearly for example imam uh, ahmad ibn hanbal he was a great muhaddith but he lacked fiqh hmm. and in uh, in his like f uh, final years it's in a way like uh, similar to Imam uh, Imam Al Ghazali. Imam Al Ghazali lacked uh, hadith knowledge. Hmm. So in his like later years, he started like uh, learning a uh, hadith. But he was a, a great faqih and also um, a mutakallim. Hmm. And uh, but uh, so not everyone can can master all these uh, um, knowledge. Yet, nowadays, people, when they say, oh, you know, I can just look up the Quran or the Hadith, this, that. And when you think about it, uh, I mean, you, you just think of people who say that it must be insane. Hmm. You see, because these people who had like such an amazing knowledge, they, they, they didn't even do that. They wouldn't. Hmm. Yet, nowadays, people don't even know like uh, how to speak Arabic. Or they don't even know what Bukhari means. You know hmm. what? I I assure you, including the Imams, if I ask people the name of Sahih al Bukhari or the name of Sahih al Muslim, they will not know. Hmm. There's there are specific names for these hadith books, and they are like a specifically written as a textbook, not like for everyone. Hmm. And so, but later on, what happened? Like. Um, People uh, without knowledge, they start like reading these hadith, and then they didn't have any knowledge. Hmm. Uh, they start like uh, interpreting things according to their own like uh, whims and desires. Later on, um, for example, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, he saw this as a danger, so he wrote a commentary, Fath al Bari, uh, so that lay people can understand certain bits. So uh, there's lots of like confusion. And so it uh, one needs to know which book to read, which mm. book not to read. And uh, uh, so the other thing is uh, uh, like uh, like I'm writing, for example, uh, about lives of these people. Yeah, and um, I will just uh, give uh, one, let's say, one uh, couple of examples. So is this in terms of your project of uh, towards understanding hadith or? Uh, or asul of uh, hadith, uh, or? hadith, and also like um, other like uh, issues, uh, like uh, fiqh, like tasawwuf. This okay. is all part of your book. Or? Oh yes, yes, inshallah. Well, but this is gonna be a separate book, inshallah. Hmm. So, for example, let's take um, this uh, scholar. Uh, his name is uh, Sulaiman bin Mihran. Hmm. 
his uh, kunya or we say like uh, kind of like uh, nickname they would call him amash so he was from kufa okay and uh, he was a uh, contemporary um, to uh, imam abu hanifa uh, well, he was born in 61 hijri and uh, passed away uh, 148 and uh, imam abu hanifa uh, was born in uh, 80 and passed uh, in 150 Hijri. So they were like contemporaries. So Amash was an expert yeah, in Hadith, Qur'at, yeah, and Fiqh. But this does not mean that uh, he can easily you know, uh, uh, give uh, rulings. They, he had the knowledge. But he is mostly known for Hadith and Qur'at. Okay? And uh, so they say like... Um, uh, he knew about 100,000 hadith uh, with chains of narration. So 100,000 hadith with chains of narration. And he was considered as thiqa. Thiqa in hadith uh, terminology uh, means reliable. Hmm. So when we see the name of Amash in the chain, we just say, okay, that's it. this guy is um, reliable. We don't question anything because we know who he is. So let, let me like just uh, summarize like what kind of person he was. First, first of all, he was uh, Zahid. So Zahid like self-disciplined. Okay. So and refraining from suspicious and doubtful things. Like he, he wouldn't even question, oh, is this haram or halal? Is that? Whenever he thinks there's some doubt, he would not even question. Just refrain. So um, when he would wake up, yeah, he would make tayammum. And if he thought it would take a while to find water, when he was asked why he would do that, he said, I am scared of dying yeah, without wudu as death can come any time. So he's in bed, he wakes up, he needs to go to like, you know, bathroom, but at those, at those days, so you don't have a bathroom like inside the house. So you need to go to a water source and make wudu. So he would immediately, as soon as he wakes up, make tamu. Because they're so conscious, self-disciplined, yeah. And the interesting thing is one of the Ottoman sultans, yeah, Sultan Abdul Hamid II. He's one of the later ones, isn't he? I yes, think, yeah. uh, who, you know, rejected the Jews, hmm. um, did not give the uh, land to Jews and so... Oh, in Palestine. Yeah. Oh, Jews I see. I, I, I heard the name somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they told him, like, uh, you know, we'll cover all the costs of uh, Uthmanis and give us uh, just a just, uh, just small place from Palestine. And he said that uh, Palestine is not mine to give. It's been, um, you know, uh, captured with the bloods of martyrs. Go and ask them. And if you want to take Palestine... As long as I'm alive, you cannot take it. But uh, as soon as you get rid of me, you will take it for free. And Sultan Abdul Hamid was the kind of person, when he wakes up, he would immediately make tayammum with a brick that he would uh, always keep underneath his bed. In the same manner. So from his bed to the bathroom, so he would have uh, like tayammum and then make wudu. You see, uh, like our khalifas and the ulama, like uh, who they were copying these people, like Amash. Hmm. Now let's see, like uh, more about the uh, Amash. So he would pray his salah in the first row in the mosque for about seventy years. No one has ever seen him apart from the first row. Okay. He was also an imam in qiraat. This means like he, he was fluent in the. All type of you know modes of recitation, and also he's in 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 the Qur'an chains. So he also narrated uh, hadith from Abdullah bin Abi Alfa, like uh, he was a companion of Prophet Sallam, but he was assigned in Kufa as like a teacher, and uh, so that shows that like uh, he learned from the companion of Prophet Sallam. So Amash also um, uh, asked questions in fiqh and other issues to Imam Abu Hanifa. He was an expert in hadith, 100,000 hadith he knew by heart. 
He was an expert in Qiraat, different modes of uh, recitation. And then, uh, like, there are no such people. So hang on, isn't it like, don't, today people find it very strange because, for example, they can't get over the fact that someone is a Hadith master, mm -hmm. like, say, Imam Bukhari, mm -hmm. or let's say, someone who knows a lot about Hadith, like mm -hmm. Ibn Adamiya, mm -hmm. and they're like, that's it, man, how can that guy not be, like, able to give ruling, mm -hmm. or, for example, this very um, gifted person with mm -hmm. huge sacrifice and knowledge, how can he go to Imam Abu Hanifa for ruling? Mm -hmm. So what are, what is, like, the kind of conditions to be like mujtahid is must be really huge then isn't it if hundred thousand hadith you're mm -hmm. still not mujtahid okay here's the okay let me give you this um um einstein hmm. yeah was a a physicist hmm. he was not a mathematician hmm. okay he actually lacked lots of uh, mathematical knowledge hmm. and he admitted this and he was even like uh, I've heard this actually I've heard people yeah, say yeah, yeah he was shy about even like admitting it but you know and then he also started like um, uh, learning from uh, Minkowski and he was a great like uh, mathematician and uh, he has actually lots of uh, um, contributions in in the field of like geometry hmm. and uh, so um, like a uh, we have like Minkowski space time, like flat uh, space time, and uh, is an amazing guy. Okay, but Einstein was more famous, right? Hmm. And he came up with certain like uh, things because hmm. he's the way he he thinks, the way he understands the universe, is really unique. Although Minkowski had more mathematical knowledge, and uh, but he wasn't as good as. Einstein in terms of like a viewing a picture in the universe mm. so this shows like people um, they might be experts in certain fields but their thinking are not the same mm. so um, I can give like numerous examples for example in my eyes Max Planck and uh, like uh, also James Maxwell they were uh, greater than Einstein and if, if these people, uh, like especially Maxwell, if he, he wasn't there, Einstein wouldn't discover anything. Okay? And uh, so this shows uh, something. Uh, knowing hadith, or, or okay, muhadith means someone, someone who knows like uh, many, many hadith by heart. Okay? Or... Uh, in, a, in a written text they know it and uh, so this does not mean that they can understand the meaning of the hadith in order to drive rulings because the key thing in like mostly the hadith is not about the metan about what it means muhadiths like they're experts in the chain like who this guy is how old was he? Who was his teacher? More like about the history, yeah, history of the Hadith literature. Pardon me. Rather than the metn, what it means. So they were not educated in order to drive rulings. They were educated in order to test the authenticity of these chains. And mainly uh, there's a science in Ulum uh, al-Hadith called Jarh, yeah, Al-Jarh wa Ta'di. So this is about like whether this person is reliable or he's a fabricator or he's a liar. Where did he learn from? Which areas, you know, did he go to? Okay. Uh, was, you know, did he have taqwa? Okay. So for example, about Amash, how do we know all these things? Because these muhaddithun, they would like uh, observe them like a detective. They would test them. They would like... Uh, I would say exactly like a detective. So they they were experts in these things. So this does not give them uh, an authority to understand the meaning of the hadith and then apply it. Mm. That uh, requires an extra um, uh, field of um, uh, ex ex expertise, let's say, and uh, which is related to usul uh, fiqh.
So it's like a detective isn't a judge or a forensics expert. He doesn't decide guilty or not guilty. Yes. He just gives the information. Yes. So we're actually familiar with this. We wouldn't say yes. this, uh, det- you know, this forensics expert is such a huge expert. How can we deny it? You mm. know, we would say still it has to go to court and then judge will preside or jury. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So mm. you cannot like judge is different, mm. and uh, uh, like the one who catches the you know. Uh, like a criminal is different so everyone has this but now you're gonna see for example from this uh, exam like uh, that like uh, how Amash for example uh, there's some uh, there's a story between them so what happened is like so Amash although he knew you know all these hadith by heart etc so and also he was uh, like it's not that he did not know fuqh he knew fuqh as well but it takes something extra to drive rulings by combining all that <coughs> knowledge. Like Einstein and maths. E- exactly. Yeah. So, and, uh, so, um, so he, Amash asked uh, lots of questions actually, in fiqh and other issues to Imam Abu Hanifa. And Imam Abu Hanifa answered these questions by referring to certain hadith which were also known by Amash. Hmm. For example, Amash uh, would teach hadith to lots of people and uh, in some of these gatherings Imam Abu Hanifa um, would, uh, would be there and uh, he would hear from Amash some hadith right? and then like uh, later on Amash would ask him a fiqh question and Imam Abu Hanifa would say uh, the ruling is this and Amash would ask him so how did you know he said uh, you, uh, like uh, it's this hadith you remember you were like, uh, you know, teaching to these people. And Amash would say, wow, okay. So although he knew the hadith, but he did not have the story. Um, for example, um, uh, Amash asked uh, Imam Abu Hanifa uh, about uh, a ruling in fiqh, okay, in jurisprudence. And uh, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa explained uh, this uh, the solution in detail to him. And Amash said, Oh Imam Abu Hanifa, yeah, yeah, Imam, yeah, Abu Hanifa, we, the Muhaddith, yeah, are like the pharmacist, okay, and you are the faqih who is like the doctor, hmm. okay. The Muhaddith narrate the hadith and analyze the lives of hadith narrators, etc., yeah, and then c- come to a conclusion from a hadith. Uh, experts point of view that it is reliable or not yeah? and the faqih they understood the profound like meanings that they uh, they drive from the hadith for the benefit of the woman. So I, I'm, I hate to interrupt but I've heard this terminology before and someone said there is this kind of war between the pharmacists and the doctors uh, you know, like the people who are like the Hadith, the people of Hadith, and then the, the people who are like a fiqh and all of this. Is there any such thing like there's conflict between these people or is it just, as you say, harmonious? Like the people of Hadith would defer to the doctors, like how we can understand in real life. Mm-hmm. The pharmacists, they provide the tools for the doctors mm-hmm. to work, but it's very unlikely a pharmacist would just stand now, up and there, say... There were no like wars, but what, what would have happened, for example... Um, you see, like, it is not like, in today's world, for example, if I hear something about this uh, scholar, hmm. maybe, you know, I can easily get through to him hmm. by phone in this, that. But them days, people would live in different locations. So if, let's say, a muhaddith, like him, uh, or someone, a big scholar, uh, would hear about some other scholar, that, oh, okay, you know, he said something. So he cannot immediately test that. And immediately upon that assumption that, you know, he said something maybe controversial, he would just uh, say, that, oh, you know what, this is like heresy. Okay? So, and uh, this would spread as a rumor. And this happened actually to Imam Abu Hanifa. And Imam Abu Hanifa uh, was uh, uh, yeah, called heretic uh, by a big scholar. And then he went and met him later on. And then uh, when both met, and that scholar said, Subhanallah, I, if I knew that, uh, you know, you were such person, 
I would uh, I wouldn't uh, like utter such words. Now I understand that you you are one of the you know uh, people this ummah needs. So there's no such thing like there's a gang of hadith and they disagree with a gang of fiqh. And, no, and no, you, you no, know, like the Hadith guys are like, why do you have this no, usul of fiqh? No, you just need Hadith. No, no, no. No such thing. No, there's just, you know, there are certain individuals hmm. who who have been, let's say, misled. Hmm. Because you see, like, a them days, fitna was prevalent. Because even Imam Bukhari was accused of being Mu'tazila, right? Or something? Uh, many, many. Many people, all sorts I mean, of I was Even, like, for example, Imam Nasai was called, uh, he was. Um, Shia and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. same like today. Yeah. <laughs> same like today, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, like uh, they say, Imam Bukhari, for example, hated uh, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, etc. Yeah, because uh, Imam Abu Hanifa would prefer um, Ra'i, like you know, critical analogy, Qiyas, uh, to uh, Hadith, for example, hmm. like weak Hadith. Hmm. So, oh, but you know, the, Inshallah, we can give a, a, a another talk about these issues later on hmm. because these are uh, issues uh, a bit technical hmm. of course like you know it, it happens like a, a scholarly debates happen hmm. and but it is not like you know if uh, fiqh gang and hadith gang this is absurd okay hmm. this is rubbish but today we do have that hmm? we do have that to extent of like uh, i think this is why you wanted to write your book isn't it hmm. because today we have uh, the issue of like if you and me, even if let's say I don't know anything, and we're having an argument like about something, like should we vote? Mm. And then we just start throwing hadith at each other, mm. and then we decide that you know no understanding, and you know when was this hadith revealed or anything? And I say my hadith is sahih, yours is questioned, and that's end of mm. argument. So it's not correct, is it? No, no. Hmm. But this would what would have happened, for example, the scholars from Basra, hmm. because they come from a different school of thought. And scholar f scholars from Kufa come from different school of thought. So, on certain issues, they would uh, differ. For example, one of the uh, teachers of uh, Imam Bukhari was, I think, Mu'tazila. And uh, he left him, Imam Bukhari. And then uh, he, uh, he became a very uh, like, um, ardent um, student of uh, Imam uh, Ali ibn Madini. So um, these things happen, like you know. But it's it's not like you know, uh, like gang and this. Thing, so and uh, they would like argue uh, with proofs. Okay. Uh, okay. So another thing here. Once someone asked a question to Amish, and Amish couldn't provide an answer, and then asked Imam Abu Hanifa. Then Imam Abu Hanifa answered the question in detail, and then Amash asked him how did he drive uh, this, because it was really good. And then um, Imam Abu Hanifa said that uh, he derived that ruling from a hadith that he learned from Amash. Okay. So, um, whereas like... Uh, Nowadays it's just uh, completely different, uh, everything. Um, also, Amash uh, met Anas bin Malik, yeah, so who was a companion of Muhammad and narrated a hadith from Adir um, bin Hubayth, Ibrahim al Nakhai, Ibn Shihad, Al Zuhri, SubhanAllah, these are all like great uh, muhaddith. And others, so he narrated about 1,300 hadith. And um, also, um, Al Hakim uh, and Nisaburi, a great muhadith, he narrates from Ibn Ma'in that the best chain of narration okay, in hadith is the chain of Amash from Ibrahim and Nakhai from uh, al qama bin Qais, from Abdullah bin Mas'ud. So this is like, uh, according to Hakim, this is like silsila to Zahab, like a golden chain. So when you see this, you know, it's like perfect. In a way, like uh, we can say, 
you know, in any field, the most like famous people, right? So if they, let's say like, uh, let's say, you know, three people, uh, Galileo, Newton and Einstein, right? So they agreed upon something, then everyone will accept it, right? In, in terms of like physics, they say, yeah, this, yeah, you know, we, we cannot question because it's so authoritative and these people are so reliable in, in that science. Just, just an example. So same thing in uh, when you look at these people, uh, like you know the way you know their memory, their taqwa, piety, and um, like everything, their life is everything about these people. They're close to like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, uh, are so reliable. So when you see a chain like this, you say, "This is this is Sahih, no doubt." So, um, uh, yes, so yeah, this, this, so this was just, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, examples of, uh, of a, a scholar at the time. Oh, and the other thing is he was blind. All right, so, um, inshallah, um, uh, we, we carry on with the, like the other scholars, so uh, later on. Um, now I want to like just talk about Ibrahim and uh, Nakhai uh, so he was uh, one of the um, teachers of uh, Sulaiman bin Hamad who also taught uh, Imam Abu Hanifa so Ibrahim and Nakhai was from uh, Kufa he was a Mufti but originally he was uh, from Yemen and uh, from Tabi'in so he was an expert in fiqh and hadith and um, so he was the like milestone or we can say like founder not the founder but yeah, so he learned from his uh, uh, teachers who were companions and um, so he would use like critical analogy in fiqh what we call like uh, ra'i and uh, so based on a hadith of uh, Mu'adh bin Jabal and um, as you know Mu'adh bin, uh, Mu'adh bin Jabal um, عليه, was a companion of Prophet Muhammad Prophet Muhammad told him to uh, go to Yemen and teach Islam there and then uh, just before he set off Prophet Muhammad asked him uh, how he, how is he gonna um, tell people about Islam? What are you gonna use? What is your method? And he said he will refer to Quran first and then refer to Hadith first and then he will use his critical analogy hmm. or his mind in that sense but he's not gonna use his mind according to his inclination so his um, Inclination so, like emotion, or yeah, like according to just um, you know what this makes sense to me kind of thing. Like prejudice. Yeah, yeah. maybe prejudice, cliche, hmm. uh, anything. Uh, the reason that I use I use that word is um, you need to like when these scholars when they are making critical analogies or they are using their aql. Hmm they are trying to understand a specific verse or a hadith and then uh, comparing that with the, with the reality and then um, the essence of the ruling in that sense is coming from hadith or Quran because you can find now one of the examples like um, Imam Shafi'i uh, was asked a fiqh question and uh, so he would go over uh, Quran uh, more than uh, like 300 times around that just to find that particular answer so uh, it is not that like these people you know they're coming out with something new they learned uh, these um, from the companions okay 
and uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu and Abdullah uh, ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu they were pivotal in uh, this like a critical analogy and, and the thinking and um, driving the hukum you know, from Quran and Hadith so this has to be really um, understood and uh, the other thing is um, Ibrahim al Nakhai he met Sa'ad al Khudri Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha and also he learned from uh, Al Qama Qadi Shuraif Masruq etc so uh, also uh, A'mash Hamad bin Sulaiman they narrated hadith from him um, so he he was such a person he would look at the um, meaning or, or the text of the hadith rather than narrators so that's what we said like uh, you know there is the difference main difference between a faqih and a muhaddith really like the mutton as opposed to the chain like the content yes, as opposed to yeah. Um, because there are like um, five agreed um, conditions hmm. for a hadith to be um, considered as authentic, yep. sahih. Hmm. And so uh, in these five conditions, um, three of them are related to the chain hmm. and two of them are related to um, the uh, Text. Uh, Hafiz Mahmood, didn't you say yesterday that isn't it um, when we talk about Sahih of Bukhari, that's different conditions to Sahih of Muslim. When they say Sahih, it's not like the same conditions, isn't it? No, like, no, like we have, uh, for example, Sahih, Ibn Hibban, Ibn Khuzayma, they have also their Sahih. Okay, and uh, so, uh, but these scholars, they had different approaches in uh, considering a certain hadith so not all of them had the same conditions mm. um, so we can uh, yes yeah, so, some uh, are considered as mutasahil uh, like they were a bit lenient in their mm. approach so a sahih hadith may, might be considered to a particular scholar as Hassan uh, because he finds a person there whom he thinks that his memory is not as strong as uh, some other uh, scholar who's narrating the same hadith. So, uh, because uh, this can make a, a um, hadith, like demote the hadith from Sahih to be become Hassan, hmm. or vice versa. So, but these are all like technical issues. Now, um, so not everyone is muhaddith and not uh, everyone is faqih. So we have to differentiate these um, things. Also, not everyone is um, like ahli tasawuf. Mm. When we say like ahli tasawuf or like the, the teacher of this um, like spiritual sciences, basically. And uh, so uh, everyone has an expert in something. Hmm. And as I uh, mentioned earlier, there were only like uh, seven, like mujtahid fuqaha, from the companions, hmm. whom like uh, pe people learned their knowledge. Like w when I say like mujtahid, I'm talking about like the fully, in terms of like fuqh. Well, for example, we can see Abu Huraira, radiyallahu an, as a muhaddith, hmm. in a way because he narrated more hadith. Okay and he compiled hadith and um, uh, whereas um, like um, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha or Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Abdullah uh, ibn Umar uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anha they were really good in fiqh hmm. so ruling so this sort of uh, in a way like a classification um, were there amongst the companions as well. So you were saying, so it did not. People, people think that oh, you know, uh, this is like this came afterwards, etc. So 
these are all teachers. I, imagine this, like, let's say I'm a teacher, I teach um, biology. Mm -hmm. And then, um, let's say you are a teacher, you teach, uh, again, biology, but we go to some different places. Mm -hmm. And in these different places, there are different, what? Plants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you do is you use different methods yeah, to water, for example, these plants and then see how they grow and then, you know, dissect them and analyze them. And you see different types of like cell structures. This does not mean that what you are doing is wrong. If you use the same method, for example, in, in this other place, then, um, you know, you may uh, come across some problems. Mm. That's the beauty of uh, Islam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's one of the reasons why, you know, Quran um, has been uh, like revealed in um, Sabat uh, Ahruf, like more than uh, one, um, uh, like a chain of uh, Tawat. Uh, because, you know, in order to facilitate, facilitate the religion for people. And these uh, uh, faqih from the companions uh, of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had a uh, like different approach. One of them might be like very soft in character, the other one is like sharp. So the way they teach and the, the way their students perceive things are different, but they're all of them correct. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught that. The, the same problem like we have, like they say, oh, you know, uh, has Quran, you know, uh, been changed? Because why do we have like uh, different narrations of uh, reading this, etc.? Quran is not changed. Okay, the source is one. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. for example, you know, I'm telling you, I'm gonna teach a number to you, number seven. I'm gonna teach you a number, number five. I'm gonna teach you a number, number four, right? And then they all. They come together, yeah. They say, I learned this. And the other one say, I learned this. The other one say, I learned this, yeah. They put it all together, they see something wow, amazing. Okay? And then when they put everything together, they get like from, say, um, like one to uh, nine, it's some sort of like a nicely ordered, you know. Um, digit system mm -hmm. or whatever you call it so in in this sense the, the, the same thing um, uh, with uh, hadith and the uh, fiqh is the same because all these rulings uh, which have been like uh, uh, derived from Quran and Sunnah and from the examples of Prophet they had to be systemized in the same way that the Quran has to be written on the text, so the, the, the later generations uh, would benefit from it. Hmm. And by, by, by just looking at it and thinking, oh, you know, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, you know, he made, he used his logic or he did this, blah, blah, wrong. You know, by saying that what you are doing is, who was the teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa? He had about 3,000 teachers. Okay? Who was his teacher? He, one of his teachers, for example, Sulaiman bin Hamad. Who was Sulaiman bin Hamad's teacher? Ibrahim and Nakhai. Who was his teacher? al -Qala. Who was his teacher? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Mm -hmm. So, also, who was the teacher of Ibrahim and Nakhai? Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha or Sa'id al-Khudri, okay? So what you are saying by talking ill of Imam Abu Hanifa, you are basically cussing that chain. Because Imam Abu Hanifa learned from these people. He did not learn things on his own, sitting down, etc. And at that time in Kufa, there were amazing people, his best friends. They knew, like, uh, as I gave you the example of uh, Amash, Sulaiman bin Mihar. This person, he knew over like 100,000 hadith. Yet he would come and ask Imam Abu Hanifa. So we need to be careful 
when we are like uh, talking about um, these sort of issues. And uh, uh, the other thing is, um, so as I told you, like Ibrahim al um he would drive um, rulings from Quran and Sunnah through analogy. Look, we are talking about this from Quran and Sunnah, not from any other book or from his own mind. This is not like people think that this is like maths. Yeah, I think um, you know one of the things which people nowadays are confused about and people confuse them is they act like when people are saying Quran and Sunnah like somehow human being or brain is not involved you know like a Quran and I, I follow Quran and Sunnah like I became Quran and Sunnah but mm. how did I decide when I reach maturity that Quran is word of God by using my mind right mm. so like they're acting like doing that is haram so how did I become Muslim or even any person today Alhamdulillah, we know many converts, right? Mm -hmm. So how did they convert to Islam? By using brain. But as yeah. soon as they became Muslim, using brain became haram. It's very uh, strange, right? You know, like almost like what they're accusing Imam Abu Hanifa of, even if he did use his brain only, fine, but he came to right conclusion and he's justifying by Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. So how did these people who accuse him, how did they come to conclusion that Muhammad is Prophet, that Allah exists, is by using brain? So it's like really bizarre thing to insult and then as you say, who is teaching for him? It's exactly. like these like, personalities which we cannot even dare thing. to. For example, look, when I say like, you know, his teacher, this, that, in Islam, like, it is not like uh, over here in the, in, in the West, and this is now being very common in uh, uh, Islamic countries as well. Uh, the knowledge has been passed down through, um, like, uh, teachers. In the way that you sit in front of them, you learn as like you know you learn first adab. The adab is like moral values, etiquettes. Like uh, for example, Imam uh, Muhammad uh, bin Al Qasim, who was uh, um, the student of Imam Malik, uh, May Allah bless them all. And um, so. He stayed with uh, Imam Malik for 20 years and he, when he was asked what did you learn, he said for 18 years he learned etiquette, moral values, for 2 years he learned what? Knowledge. So because what we say like uh, we hear you know, from the scholars that they say knowledge is like salt and the adab or moral values, etiquettes of learning and uh, any, any knowledge is exactly like um, flour or dough. You see, compared to the flour, how little uh, salt you put in. But nowadays we have like uh, everywhere, we don't have knowledge, we have information. We live in an like information age, and people they just sit down and then think that when they read, they just uh, understand everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas they don't. What you are doing is, um, you are being in a way that you, you are trying to be like a computer. Mm -hmm. But actually, in that sense, computer is better than you. What mm -hmm. differentiates you and the computer is not the information that you have; it is the adab that you have. Okay, so that's the difference, and when you lose that, then you start like uh, saying things, oh, you know what, I'm going to spit out this hadith and people will be so impressed, etc. I'm going to show them that I have this knowledge. And these things are going to be like uh, healed up by uh, people who are experts in uh, like uh, tasawwuf. Mm. And uh, we have like uh, many scholars, um, uh, who had, for example, a, a teacher in fiqh and then he had a teacher in tasawwuf and then he had a teacher in hadith. It is so rare in the whole Islamic history that you find a single person who is an expert in everything. Unbelievable. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen anyone like that. Okay? okay? I haven't. And that was the, uh, the only person who, who was that was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hmm. Okay? And the people uh, who's got ilm from 
him so so you see he was he was in a way like uh, subhanallah you know light from one source how you know uh, how the light rays from one source just uh, disperses in the same way the knowledge was like flowing from that and some people like if you look at the Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Uthman, Ali, Umar, Abu Bakr, you see the different characteristics. These are all examples to us because there are many Umar, Ali, Uthman, okay, and uh, Abu Bakr living in this society like, with the same characteristics. So that's the main thing. So you need to understand like uh, in which area you are good at and then you have to uh, work hard towards um, that direction and uh, so there's yes. not many you can say polymaths like the kind of absurd things people will say about certain scholars because uh, it tends to be like um, you know for example uh, Ibn Damia is very good at hadith so mm -hmm. people can't understand but how can he be rubbish at kalam how can it be guy is so, such expert and when he doesn't know hadith or he doesn't know kalam or he doesn't have how can he not make ruling so it's uh, people don't understand this concept, but as you said in Islamic history, uh, there's very rare people who are if just you like certain, polymath. Look, if you ask uh, maths questions mm. to Einstein, you know what Einstein will do or would do? They say, look, I'm not, uh, I don't know much about maths. Mm. It's, he would send you to some other guy. Well, Min, you mentioned Min, Minkowski. Minkowski he yeah. Was, yeah. So, and there are like uh, other examples. So it is so rare to find like how many people do you know? Yeah. Uh, to win a Nobel Prize mm. in uh, like uh, two, three, four, five different areas. Huh? Like none. Maybe people win uh, chemistry and then, you know, something related. Yeah, or, actually. Um, or Peace Prize and you nowadays, know, literature. Nowadays, yeah. it is almost like impossible. Yeah? Mm. But back in the days, like... Um, Pauli, I think, was one of them who won uh, in physics and chemistry mm. two Nobel Prizes. But um, if I'm not mistaken, um, so but then the, the the branches of science was not like uh, scattered like this Closer, much. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, one of the things also, can you say that now, for example, the the branches of sciences? Let's say you know we have now biochemistry, right? So, can you say biochemistry is bid'ah, okay? Mm. Or biochemistry does not come from science, later on invented? Mm. No, you cannot say it, because the source is coming from the, you know, same, like, uh, that, that uh, bigger, like, uh, uh, field, mm. which is like, maybe, you know, biology or chemistry. Now, you, you, so in the same manner, the source is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? And the, the whole knowledge is coming from there. Hmm. And then you are getting into like these different branches. Fiqh, Hadith, Tasawwuf. Yeah? People are denying Tasawwuf. If there are some deviant like uh, to Sufi Tariqahs, etc. Alright, there are many deviant Muslims. You cannot say, you know, all Muslims are rubbish. Hmm. Then you're going to be exactly like... Um, those people who consider like all Muslims terrorists. Yeah. You, so you have the same mentality. So and uh, so you, what you will say is you have you know level headed. So you have fiqh, you have hadith, you have tasawwuf. And, and yeah. So and then um, you, you, then you will try to understand. So you have kalam, aqidah. Yeah. So and then we have experts in all these fields who teach them. Yes. See, my my impression today is: Would you agree that the people of uh, Hadith are the ones who are only respected or emphasized? So the people of Tasawwuf, the expert in Tasawwuf, no one even knows who that is. So for and the people of Kalam or uh, Akida, as you mm. said rightly, is not philosophy. This is how to know your beliefs, exactly. and uh, those people are disrespected. So, for example, uh, Imam Bukhari, rightly, he is like respected by everyone. Mm -hmm. But say Hassan Al Ashri, Imam Hassan Al Ashri who is like, like Imam Bukhari for Akida, or more even. And um, he's just dis people have no problem disrespecting him. People have no problem disrespecting Ahlid Tasawwuf. That's been prophesied, uh, saying that like, uh, like later no generation will cast mm. 
uh, the um, previous ones. And uh, the other thing is one day... Uh, but not in Hadith. Like, people respect Hadith today, no, but they don't no, respect the other two. People, no, people don't even respect Hadith as well. You see some people, they even reject Hadith. But uh, thing, that's why I'm saying, um, like, you have two extremes. And um, so uh, people don't realize that if it was just uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not... What is the point of sending the uh, Prophet? Have you ever, like, you know, I have never read in uh, history, um, I will be amazed um, if, if there was such a case, okay? Have you ever, like, uh, because, alhamdulillah, um, since I was a child, I've been reading, you know, history, especially Islamic history, European, American, and uh, I have yet to see a king sending a message an important message by a pigeon to some other king if you know what I mean mm. that will be so disrespectful that's the first thing yeah mm. second thing is that message would not like be as valuable as you send a like you know proper messenger mm. third thing um, when that king may have some answers who's gonna ask who's gonna send another pigeon mm. so me, like kings always send messengers to other kings mm. and they don't send just a normal message mm. they pick the best ones yeah so uh, what these people when they you know claim that you know uh, actually we don't accept hadith right so that means you are not accepting the Prophet Muhammad yeah, This is as clear as this, um, it is. And if you say that, you know, uh, we accept hadith, but we can drive uh, the rulings from the hadith and Quran on our own, then you are not, uh, you still, um, you are not accepting Prophet Muhammad in, in that manner if you approach it. Because Prophet Muhammad came to explain in detail slowly yeah? so uh, who are you or who are we to say that we can drive the hukum i explained to you earlier about three like great mahadi thing mm, understanding yeah, so you have to exactly reach, so yeah. they had like such immense like uh, knowledge of hadith quran and also like uh, amish what was the story of a three muhaddithin and the woman who approached him, right? Yeah, the, uh, like three muhaddithin, they're having, uh, they're revising hadith together. All of them, they knew over 100,000 hadith. In fact, uh, one of them is like Yahya bin Ma'in, okay? And these guys that you were saying even bigger than Imam Bukhari, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. They so, were like yeah, yeah. on the levels of like teachers of Imam Bukhari. Mm. And uh, they were the... Um, Contemporaries of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Mm. So, um, and then this woman came, uh, said that like she's on her period, but she has to wash uh, bodies, like you know, for funeral dead bodies, for, yeah, dead yeah. bodies uh, for funeral services. But so, uh, can she wash them? And then they all looked at each other. They didn't know what to say. And then uh, Abu Sawr uh, was approaching towards that group. And then she asked him, and he said, yes, you can, because there's a hadith but where it is mentioned that Hazrat Aisha was uh, come, come in the hair of Prophet Muhammad why she was on her period. Okay? And then all these muhaddithin, they looked at each other and said, oh, yeah, yeah, we know this hadith. Yeah. We, we. And then uh, the woman told them, you are useless. <laughs> okay? It, so, like you are just, uh, you just know it, but you don't know the, you know, uh, you cannot drive rulings from that. So that requires some extra skill, right? So can you say like, for example, um, a person who makes swords is a good swordsman, okay? So you cannot. Mm, that's okay? amazing. That's a very so, good point. Or uh, like you use the example of even the pharmacist and the doctor. Exactly. So amazing, that, that's yeah. the, the example like a pharmacist and a doctor. 
a pharmacist will not be able to diagnose anything. Mm -hmm. He's gonna just, uh, um, you know, manufacture um, the medication and then you know can provide the medication for him, right? But uh, when it comes to like diagnosing, it's the job of um, uh, the doctors. And uh, I did, like these are not my own words. I'm just quoting. I'm a narrator. So it's uh, like, and um, so um, the other thing is uh, about like uh, the hadith. Um, people they have this misunderstanding that like uh, that there's only like you know there's mutawatir hadith and then there's ahad hadith etc. So in ilm uh, al hadith, we have two things. When we look at a hadith, we look at the uh, we look at a chain. And then we look at the text. So in the chain, we have people. The first thing we do before we look at the um, text, we look at these people. Who are these people? And Alhamdulillah, you know, we have uh, the li life stories of every one of them. Yeah? We know what they ate, even at what time they were sleeping, who they, they see, and all that sort of stuff. So, first of all, mutawatir um, hadith um, is something what we call like ilm daruri. So when something is mutawatir, you have yaqeen. Now, if you reject mutawatir, you are kafir. Khalas. You reject it, you are out of Islam. Yaqeen is certainty? Yaqeen is, yes. Yaqeen is as if you are seeing it, as if you saw it. Mm. That's yaqeen. This is ilm daruri. There is no like um, doubt in it at all. Okay. So this one is not like mutawatir hadith. Um, like muhaddithun, they do not deal with mutawatir hadith. Okay. Really? No. Mutawatir is mutawatir. Khalas. Okay. There's no need to mess There's around. There's no need to like, you know, look at... Uh, There's no science of it. No, no, yeah. no science of it. It's so, like, does, you use the example of like, does, what was it, does Russia exist? So there's no people Exactly, working and on then like, topic. you know, you don't find people who will go and, and try to look for yeah, Russia. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So, Mutawatir is compulsory to believe, okay? And uh, so the whole Quran is what? Mutawatir. The whole of it. We cannot say, oh, you know, uh, maybe this surah, that surah, etc. Yeah. So, if someone deliberately, yeah, rejects one verse of Quran or say that uh, one verse is khabar um, ahad or something, mm. okay, this is very dangerous. That means that person needs to go and revise. And understand what mutawatir is, what ahad means. The other thing um, is, for example, um, there's a book by Imam Suyuti, Qatful uh, Azhar, for example. This is about mutawatir hadith. Like you can go and, and find the. I don't think it's, is it the, translated, that book. I'm not sure. I'm, mm. I'm not sure. I think even Imam Suyuti's Quran book just recently came out. Mm. And like I, I think you saw it, and you said this is like only a small part of it. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was like sixty pounds or forty pounds or something. Yeah. It's sad. I, I, I just, you know, I'm just thinking what what imams are doing, you know, in mosques. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Uh, so we need to work hard. And um, the other thing is, um, like a mutawatir uh, can happen like uh, through the text, okay. And uh, for example, Imam Prophet Muhammad Sallam. You know, narrated the Prophet Sallam said, "Man kithiba alayya mutaamidan, yafal yataba waqadahu min al nar." So there are like a, about like seventy different narrations of this hadith, which says that whoever, um, like, uh, tells a lie about me, basically fabricating hadith or you know saying that Prophet Sallam said this, etc. Let him or her um, be ready, you know, for, for the hellfire, prepare, you know, his place. So, the funny thing is, this hadith is what? Mutawatir. 
out of many hadith, it is so ironic that this hadith is mutawatir, isn't it? Yep. And the other thing is, for example, it ha- it, you ask, uh, like, you know, I've been asked uh, earlier about, like, um, how many people do we need, for example, uh, for a hadith to become mutawatir? It has nothing to do with the people. Okay? So in, in this case, for example, um, as I told you, like, you know, we have 70 different uh, narrations and in each narration you may have like f- five people, six people, okay, in, 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 in the chain. So that doesn't mean, um, you know, it's going to be, so it has nothing to do with this number. So the, the other conditions to that. So can you just briefly tell us about what kind of, because people think mutawatir um, uh, just means like, say, 100 people heard it. So no, no, no. Look, you, you, <coughs> uh, you can have like 100 people um, may narrate it, etc. But um, those people may not be reliable. They might be, you know, gathering in one group and then just uh, fabricating hadith and then spreading it, right? So, and... Um, uh, th- so the important issue here is about khabar uh, al-ahad. Mm. So muhaddithun, the experts, yeah, they deal with ahad khabar. They don't right. deal with mutawatir. Mutawatir is already mutawatir, you know. Why, why do you have... So, yeah, you don't need that. So, um, yes? Can I ask a, is a silly question? Is there like a book which collects all the mutawatir hadith? Because we don't really hear about it, right? Yes, yeah, they do, yeah. As I, I just uh, gave you, like, this Imam Qatful, Yeah, Qatful Azhar is a very good book. And uh, it collects Imam all Sayyuti. the mutawatir. How, how many mutawatir no, hadith would there not, be? Not all the mutawatir, but, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, this is controversial, like, the number of mutawatir hadith. Some say it's, um, it's about, like, 200, etc., yeah. But actually, I uh, came across a, a recently, like, compiled, very good book. Um, and uh, there were about like uh, 1,000 uh, mutawatir hadith there. Mm. But inshallah, uh, what I will go, I will, um, um, I will um, check my notes again, and then um, so I can inshallah um, tell you about that book uh, later on because um, uh, there are different types of mutawatir hadith. So when we say mutawata hadith, it does not necessarily mean that the uh, text is going to be there. Mm. Okay, so when we say like when we talk about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his actions, we are not like, you know, talking about everything in in written uh, f- uh, format. It might be, you know, um, his actions, right? Mm. It might be like his, he was quiet in one situation, so mm. that quietness meant something. For example, um, like رفع اليدين. You know, you say like uh, Allahu Akbar. So this is, uh, for example, معنى متواتر. That's what we say. It's not لفظا. Like, uh, so, you will not, uh, so uh, there are different uh, Great, like areas, types. Uh, types of متواتر. But that's متواتر. And muhadithun, they deal with خبر الآحز. So, yes. uh, like, someone will ask the question, so then who deals with mutawatir stuff? Whose field is that? No, there's, there's, like, you don't need to deal with mutawatir. It's mutawatir for in terms of, like, hadith. But who who makes this kind of, like, it's this type and that type? Is muhaddifin not involved in that? No, okay. I think I'm misunderstood here. Like, a mutawatir hadith is like, a, say, okay, like Quran. Do we go and analyze every single um, Quranic verse, mm. say thinking that maybe this verse might be uh, wrong, mm. or maybe this verse may not be coming from from Rasulullah? Mm. We don't. Mm. So what muhaddithun does, they go to uh, hadith, which are not mutawatir, and they analyze these hadith, oh. and then. The the uh, the science of hadith is now built upon this uh, all the hadith which are not mutawatir what we call this khabar al ahad. So when we say khabar al ahad, ahad is the jam of wahid. Okay, 
So, ahad is one, ahad is plural. So when we say like khabar al-ahad, now here we are talking about like, uh, again like the, there's confusion. Khabar does not mean, or hadith, not necessarily the um, the words of Prophet Muhammad It might be the words of uh, companions. It might be the words of uh, tabi'in. So we have um, uh, differences, like if, if it is... Uh, if it is the if if the chain goes to Prophet Muhammad what we call is marfur or mausul. If it goes to uh, the companion and stops there, does not reach. So a tabi'in is narrating from the companion and saying that the companion said so and so. Then what we call this malkuf. If atba'a tabi'in narrating from tabi'in and saying that for example this tabi'in saying so and so or did this then you call that maqtur so this is uh, from whom the source it is coming according to this 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 classification made so hadith qudsi is coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the difference between hadith qudsi and quran is uh, the like uh, lafz the uh, let's say the text belongs to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but the ma'na the meaning belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala whereas in Quran the text and the ma'na everything belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala yeah, so that's the key difference and um, the uh, other thing is um, Um, yeah, uh, also, um, so when we look at Ahad uh, Khabar, um, according to um, like the number of veins or, or, or chains in any generation, it, it has three uh, categories like Mashur, Aziz, and Gharib uh, uh, or uh, Fard. So Mashur is going to be equal to. Uh, three and more narrators in one particular chain. Let's say you know it is coming from uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi through a companion. One companion narrated only. And then from that one companion, let's say five tabi'in took. And then from five tabi'in, ten tabi'in tabi'in. And then after tabi'in tabi in, in the generation, it is against, uh, it, it went down to two. So you look at this each generation, what we call like, uh, like tabaqat, or uh, we say tabaqa, and then may all from tabaqat, and so in each generation, so we look how many people. Yeah? So if we see, let's say, in each generation, not less than three narrators are narrated that hadith, and more than three equal to three or more than three, then you call that hadith mashhur. If, let's say, uh, it is narrated only from one sahabi, or narrated from five sahabi, but then from uh, two tabi'i, and then around that, but it did not go down below two, then what you call it aziz. So let's say, you know, hundred sahabi, hundred, hundred, yeah? everywhere but it went in one generation went down to one you call it uh, um, so according to this classification uh, the numbers of narrators in each generation three groups now according to this we cannot say a uh, hadith mashur aziz or gharib uh, is sahih yeah, or authentic or weak you know or fabricated because this classification is completely different so um, then uh, what we say is for example these hadith mashur or gharib or aziz they can be sahih they can be hasan they can be da'if we need to look at these um, now narrators and then we, we look at the 
um, text. <clears throat> so um, there are also different books about these each. Like for example, a Mashur Hadith. You can find uh, about um, Imam Ajuluni's Kashf al Khafa. He wrote this book about just Mashur Hadith. So he includes in this um, book a Daif Hadith, like weak, authentic. Um, so uh, you can find all type of yeah, Hassan. So because he's aim was to compile the mashhur hadith yeah like uh, in each generation at least three or more than three um narrators so now that was his aim now one layman outside go and take this book and read it right and then if they were even like you know imams they want to write book and then they quote a hadith from this book. But is it, is it authentic? Is it weak? What is it? You cannot do these sort of things. So there are aims for different, as I told you, for example, um, if it is uh, mutawatir, you have, you know, mutawatir hadith compiled in one book. So if it is mashur hadith, you're compiling one book. That doesn't mean that all of them are authentic and you can drive rulings from them. So in certain, for example, you know, tafasir, uh, the commentaries of, of Quran, you can find uh, fabricated hadith. You can find a weak hadith. Okay? So that's why, like, one needs to sit down yeah, in front of a scholar and learn. You cannot learn these things on your own. Okay? And the other thing is, uh, f uh, like, if you go and look at uh, these uh, hadith books, for example, um, not, not hadith, like t uh, tafsir books, like Imam uh, Zamakhshari. So Imam Zamakhshari, he has a tafsir book called Al-Kashaf. And Imam Zamakhshari was a Mu'tazila. But he was amazing in Arabic language. So you cannot go and read the uh, hadith, uh, tafsir on your own. Because you're gonna uh, get poisoned, so you need to sit in front of a scholar who has got a very good knowledge. Okay, and uh, so same thing like uh, Imam Thalabi's um, or Imam even like uh, Shaukani, and um, so you you find uh, these hadith uh, which are not uh, sahih at all and even like fabricated. Okay, so. Um, we need to be careful about these issues and then you know you, um, in, the, in the next category we um, we take a categorize a khabar al-ahad into two categories we say accepted ones or rejected ones so accepted ones sahih sahih li dhatihi hasan hasan li dhatihi okay and then uh, in the rejected bit you have uh, weak hadith and weak hadith has got lots of categories, unbelievable, yeah? So you cannot uh, just uh, say, you know, done. So I can just count you right now like 20, 25 categories of weak hadith. Hmm. And in each one of them, there are books written. Not one book, books. Because this ilm is so vast. You cannot just say a yeah, hadith, right? So, uh, like when we say like you know how do you understand a, a hadith is sahih so we say first of all the chain has to be all linked there will not be in one chain for example one a narrator is missing mm. if it is missing that's it it is not if if the text is perfect yeah no problem with the text if one or uh, like narrator is missing the hadith cannot be sahih at all Right, done. So, and then you have um, um, Adalatul Rawi, which is like the, the narrator has to be what? Um, very pious. Okay? So they look at his life. Does he pray salah every day, every salah in the mosque? Is it in the front row? Okay? Does he ever, ever like joke? Okay, all these things. 
Okay, who does he hang around with? And then also dubbed, dubbed to Rawi, his memory. How is his memory? Is he good? He might be so pious, but his memory might not be good. It's like, for example, um, they came to Ali ibn Madani, um, he's this um, a teacher of uh, Imam Bukhari. They asked him, uh, what, uh, we want to uh, learn hadith from your uh, father. What do you say about him? He did not say anything first. And he, they asked him again. He said, no, the, my father is not reliable. Don't ask hadith uh, about him. They also came to Imam Abu Dawood. They asked him about his son. He said the same thing. Um, he said, my son is kathab. He's a lie. Don't take uh, any hadith from him. And his son was a scholar. Because he is protecting his son. Because this religion is not about like, you know, this narrating, this narrating, that, etc. You protect your community, your people. So, uh, th that's why I'm saying uh, it is important. And so, and the other thing is like, um, so these three, um, uh, so you have Shad, it's, it's not going to be Shad. Which means like you have a Thiqa Rawi, let's say a very reliable Rawi, and his narration is in, in uh, like a contradiction with the, some other reliable Rawi. So what do you do in that case? Right? So if there is this sort of uh, uh, collision, then we say, okay, this one of the conditions of being Sahih is not fulfilled. So we take it aside. We treat that hadith differently. Huh? So what happens, for example, if there are two hadith that are in contradiction with each other? Then we do not like... Uh, uh, act upon these, what we do is, we make, we, we call we make tawakkuf, we stop, we do not reject it, we do not accept it, unless we find an evidence, right, so, not like, you know, oh, this hadith is that, this hadith is that. as if like, you know, you are like sweeping things, you don't even have knowledge, nothing, you just read from uh, Sahih Bukhari or this, that, this doesn't mean that, you know, that particular hadith, is according to you know your uh, understanding because of this reason Imam Hajar uh, you know Al Asqalani he saw this danger and he wrote what Fath al Bari commentary of Sahih Bukhari these ulama they always build upon the previous works they wrote things based on the previous works because through the generation the understanding is going down the ignorance is prevailing People are going away from the uh, like correct knowledge, so uh, because they are away from reality, they cannot understand the texts. So these texts needs to be rewritten in the way that people will understand. So then, um, uh, so if someone like uh, looks at the previous generation's books. He, uh, he or she will not understand anything. Be confused. So, uh, like the main thing here is nowadays scholars are trying to understand, yeah, the books of previous generations, and they are having difficulties in understanding the commentaries of these books, let alone the texts of these scholars' books. And you are telling me. We can understand the Qur'an on our own and all this knowledge is based upon the Qur'an. I'm not saying like Qur'an is something oh blah blah yeah. What I'm saying is there's a methodology. The Qur'an, the message of Qur'an is clear. There is something else, driving rulings etc. Establishing, you know, whole like um, like system is something different. Now you are not doing like you are not saying that yeah, I don't understand the message of Quran. Okay, let me understand the message. What you are doing is let me understand this system because this rulings, fiqh, uh, jurisprudence. This is all about system. This is exactly the same way. Take a guy from street, yeah, okay, and then take a guy from street, and then uh, bring him to royal court of justice, 
and uh, tell him that now you are a judge. So according to what? And then give him a um, law book and tell him that, like, there you go. How long uh, will it take for that person to uh, make the correct uh, judgment? Infinity. Huh? <laughs> it would be like impossible. This is exactly the way it is. You know, um, that's why like I say, uh, people, seriously, people are uh, insane. They think they are sane, but actually they don't realize that they, they are not. Because you know, saying these sort of statements, I can drive ruling from Quran on my own. Is exactly the same way I just told you. A layman, normal guy from the street, yeah, just telling him that this is the law book, yeah, and uh, you are a judge now. Drive your rulings. Huh? Is this action taking a person from the street and putting him as a judge in, like, you know, Supreme Court? Is this. Uh, can you explain this? Like, what do you call? To me, like this is like insanity. Because according to that person's verdict, you're gonna imprison someone, okay, for life, or you're gonna probably set free someone. This is a like a matter of like uh, you know some someone is gonna be alive or dead or you know that kind of this is serious. Now, would you tell me that? If someone did that kind of action, just from just from the street, and say you're a judge, yeah, this is your book, is this an act of sanity or insanity? This is insane. This is craziness. So. But when it comes to like the Quran and the religion, then you say that you know actually, oh Subhanallah, I mean that is beyond insanity. Because here on earth we are dealing with people. So. And the, the other thing is so we were talking so about. Can, can I? Just a second. And then also there's also Illa. So if you have like let's say um, um, if you have illa in a hadith, uh, then uh, you that hadith cannot be sahih. It cannot be considered as sahih. And you know how many people were experts in in this ilm? Not even Imam Bukhari knew uh, like he was an exp expert. Illa being illa is like a like a defect in a hadith which is hidden. Oh, like in the matan or. In the chain, in the chain, or in the uh, oh, right. um, um, in in the matin. So in the text, the whole thing is hadith. Okay, so the defect might be in in both of them, hmm. and only people with like some sort of like you know this is God given gift hmm. to to you know there are some stuff that like. You just look at it, you say, you know, there's something wrong here. Mm. That kind of feeling only happens, occurs when you have... Total mastery. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like these experts who can tell exactly. this painting is a forgery. Exactly. And exactly. Yeah. So, when you, you, know, uh, you know, many people, they can look at a diamond. Even mm. experts can look at a diamond and get conned. Mm. But only it takes an expert guy who's like total master, yeah? Not even like, he doesn't even look at like that, yeah? He just looks at he says there's something wrong with this. Mm -hmm. So the same uh, thing applies to um, this hadith. Uh, so this also has not to be there. And this it's is also... Uh, it's like that blink effect. In exactly. That book so by Gladwell, yeah. Yep. You know, he talks about how even... Uh, exactly the example you gave of art forgeries and some guys just look and they say something's wrong and you say what and they can't tell you but after some time you know mm. they can so and uh, so this is like uh, so uh, accepted hadith we said like sahih sahih li dhatihi hasan hasan li dhatihi like you can easily um, 
like promote the level of a hadith for example if it is Hassan and you can just uh, find an evidence and then make it Sahih okay so or you can uh, also uh, make uh, Hassan Lidatihi for example Hassan Lidatihi is not like directly Hassan but if there was let's say you know weak hadith we found another evidence, so the evidence backed up that weak hadith, so now it became what? Hassan Nidati, indirectly. So it, it, now it is considered as Hassan. So can I ask, uh, yeah. so what is Ahad? Are you saying that uh, all of Ahad is uh, all apart, hadith from, apart from Mutawatir hadith? All are Ahad. All are Ahad. Okay, so and what is there like a clear, like some people, uh, not scholars, but mm. some people they say stuff like Ahad means. It's like a fixed thing, so there's like three narrators in each generation. No, that's rubbish. Uh, that person is just uh, ignorant and mm. he doesn't know. He needs to go and uh, study <coughs> uh, really, I mean, books. We have lots of, you know, subhanAllah, this aim so, is so vast. So what would be a but, simple definition of Ahad, would you say, for us to understand? I, before that, okay, before that, let me give you an example. You know, there were scholars, mm. there was one particular scholar who left Andalus when he was 20 years old. He went to like, you know, all Islamic countries. And he came back to Andalus when he was 65, after 45 years. So in f like 45 years, and then he got married. So for 45 years, he went out there just for the love of what? Hadith. Okay, so you have like people, they leave like their kids, their wives, they don't even get married, just for this ilm. Mm -hmm. And now you are just sitting somewhere, so comfortable. You are enjoying, you know, the hustle and bustle of the city, whatever. And then you are just coming out with statements such as this. this subhanAllah, this you look man, it is... You are slandering Islam, you are slandering Allah, you are slandering the Prophet, you are slandering these people. We have to be careful. So if you do not know, then don't talk. You cannot learn this asylum through like books. This is a religion. This is not like, you know, maths, biochemistry or uh, that sort of stuff. In the, these sort of things, you can make mistakes. But in religion, if you make mistake, that means you are lying about Prophet and, and Allah and the consequences are not uh, as um, easy as it is with other like uh, fields of science. So also like, um, so we said like we have also weak hadith and the weak hadith we look at two things. One thing is um, whether in the chain there is a person, narrator and there's a missing link there. So we look at that. We have like uh, the uh, difference of, of uh, this type of hadith. Like for example, Mu'allaq, Mursal, Mu'dal, Munqati'ah. Like if there are two, like let's say, narrators just uh, missing. What are we going to do now? So how are we going to treat this hadith? Also we have like a Mudallis. So we have Mursal Khafi. This is like, you know, hidden. There are hidden defects. So how are you going to know this? For example, you know, there's this guy, his name is, let's say, you know, Ahmed. But some people, they, they call him like, uh, you know, Bobby. Hmm. And then he moved from one place to another place. And in that place, because, you know, he was so white, they start calling him like uh, Whitey or something. Hmm. So now, in the, so this guy has got different what? Nicknames or something. Mm. So in this hadith, maybe this uh, like a scholar used uh, a different type of uh, um, nickname for this guy, which is not known by many uh, scholars. So in that case, um, only a top-notch like scholar, uh, a muhaddith, will know about that and will consider that hadith as sahih or, or um, weak etc. 
So, um, so this takes really lots of effort to know uh, about all these things. And the other thing is, um, is about the reliability of of the narrator. So, um, and that, that is in in uh, two categories. One is adala, the other one is adopt. So adala is, for example, if he's a liar or not. Not only uh, lying about the religion or uh, fabricating hadith, but also in normal life if he is lying, or he has been accused of being a liar. Okay. So the other thing is like a fusk. So we have different types of fusk. So you can uh, someone become a fasik and uh, that fusk uh, may lead to uh, his uh, be or her being a kafir. But sometimes it doesn't and is just considered as Muslim. And also bid'ah. Can you take like for example a hadith from Ahl bid'ah? Yeah, like from Mu'tazila and Shia this that. Can and you? then, huh? I have a very interesting question. Uh, I think that that will maybe uh, people will be like. Yes, you. Uh, okay, this you see like this is like uh, these are all uh, type of uh, ha like hadith. Actually, you can. So you take, can. You yeah. can, but there are conditions. Like. Like for example, um, you will not take a hadith from someone. Let's say you know Shia about the. Uh, like uh, a uh, hadith which is praising, uh, you know, Ahl Bayt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, so you see, you need a deep knowledge of what is the bidah. Exactly. And then you decide. So you, because many of these like um, people from Mu'tazila, etc. Yeah, they were so pious people. Mm. They would not lie. You know, they were so. But it's just in their thinking that there was some sort of like uh, flow. But you, you need to know exactly what that exactly. is. Exactly. So, yeah, so you can you can take hadith uh, from these people, um, like, uh, but there are conditions. So, and again, so these uh, things need to be covered. I, I think that will shock a lot of our uh, people watching, isn't it? That even you can take hadith from Mu'tazila or Shia, but. Yeah, you can, yeah. Is all these conditions. So, it's not like a simple thing, like any jabroni can start. Sh throwing hadith at each other and start arguing like no. you need mm. immense knowledge there's a, there's a section which is called like um, bid'ah mm. and in this section uh, in ulum uh, al-hadith books it is it's been covered um, so you can uh, inshallah you know we'll do lessons and uh, we'll see and uh, I'm writing a book about this as well so hopefully um, I will explain all this in detail do you do you think can I ask you know when you were saying before about the judge is a beautiful example you know mm -hmm. like the law book do you think the current attitude which people have it has something to do with you know going against the cleed mm -hmm. and then that gives you ego like in the in our countries we have the same issue here like democracy mm -hmm. so you might be like a genius who spent his whole life fighting for the country and mm -hmm. fighting for justice mm -hmm. and I might be like uh, how I am just like some aimless guy mm -hmm. but we both have one vote it's equal exactly yeah. and it's like same idea is maybe so you know these people are being like uh, against the lead we're almost like uh, almost you could say like democracy like you know, why don't yeah I'm saying you know I'm hurting yeah right mm. now because you know when I think about a person like can you imagine someone is leaving Andalus mm. and going to like Mecca Medina away from his house mm. yeah for 45 years okay Learning this ilim, teaching, narrating, etc. Yeah, and then at this day and age, one person is coming up. Yeah, he doesn't have any knowledge, or he read some two, three books. Yeah, out of like many thirty thousand, and then he's saying that you know um, this hadith is weak or that hadith is dead because I read this book. Mm. That hurts so deeply, mm. and that's why you know we deserve to be. Uh, in the situation that we are in, because we lost adab, you cannot. So that's the, that's very important. And the other thing is about. Um, so I was saying also, um, um, like adabt. And uh, adabt is the memory. So let's say you know they would test each other. They would go and test people. They would ask questions. These muhaddithun. So in one like sitting, the guy would like. Um, uh, recite over 100,000 hadith with the narrations 
okay and then they would just uh, write everything down and they would see how many mistakes this guy had if he had like five ten mistakes out of hundred thousand they say all right he's got good memory yeah if he has got let's say about um hundred mistakes they say mm, you know so his memory is okay but not up to that standard right wow so we're talking like what photographic memory here then no it's just uh, beyond that mm. so forget look we are talking about like the whole chain and everything okay mm. and uh, the other thing is um so then according to that they would categorize these uh, people's reliability they would say for example this person is thiqatul mm. hujja is like so reliable and then you have this other person is just uh, thiqa gonna get uh, okay and then you have another person we call him like uh, like saduq okay so and also someone because of his like uh, age can get like older and then they say okay from now on we don't take hadith from him because he's old now he's making more mistakes mm. and uh, actually the, like uh, there's a story like uh, Yahya bin Ma'in and Ahmad ibn Hanbal and um, yeah they yeah I, I, yeah I can maybe give the example later on but basically they go to this hadith uh, scholar that they learned hadith from uh, and then um, Yahya bin Ma'in he put uh, after every, every 10 hadith he put one extra hadith just to test him and then on the 11th hadith this scholar says that I did not say this hadith this is not my hadith so and then in it uh, after 21 he puts extra 21 he's testing right if he's reliable or not yeah and they know that he's reliable but they would sometimes do that they would test one another and then after the 30th one when he did the third time this hadith scholar uh, got up and he kicked them yeah he said get out of my place yeah he, you are doing all this wrong stuff etc yeah and then Ahmed ibn Hanbal told the uh, Yahya bin Ma'in I told you not to test him yeah you know he, mm -hmm. we know already he's reliable and you know what Yahya bin Ma'in said he said that kick was so beloved to me than the whole like um, trials of this journey that we took Hmm. Like they they traveled lot like to to reach to that place, so and um, the other uh, thing is um, according to this um, if if the rabbi you know has mistakes and all that sort of stuff we, you know we we told them like fuhshul ghalat or suul hifth okay these sort of things or they may have elham, so we have also like around like uh, twenty categories under this like you know metruk, so. Uh, um, all these categories and then uh, you have also categories between accepted and rejected so we are not kind of like sure so we treat them also different okay so we have like musnad um, muttasil okay so ziyadatul thiqat and then like i'tibar mutabi' shahid and also uh, like not all Sahih Hadith is acted upon. This is another thing. Okay, you cannot say like you know this is Sahih. That's it. Let's act upon it. Okay, so you have a Hadith, which uh, Sahih Hadith, which you can act upon, and then you have Hadith you cannot act upon, and that is also related to you know how uh, in Usul Tafsir, we have Muhkam uh, and Mukhtalif, and we have also in Hadith like uh, Nasikh and and al mansukh in mm. hadith and uh, the nasikh and, and mansukh of hadith is uh, really hard uh, it's it's very tough uh, field and uh, because in quran if a verse is nasikh or mansukh then it is easy to uh, notice that or talk about it mm. because we know the chronological order of these verses when they are revealed but for hadith we do not have that sort of like time period that okay so this hadith was revealed at this you know 
time and the hadith so that's why like you know uh, it needs really uh, deep knowledge and analysis mm. to to understand whether a sahih hadith can be acted upon or not so again if um, if a book is written a hadith book is written on the basis let's say imam bukhari's uh, book yeah, sahih muslim uh, uh, or imam muslim's book sahih uh, Sahihain, these two books, they are written on the basis that they are Sahih Hadith. Yeah, they are not uh, like uh, written there on the basis that uh, you can um, you can use these Hadith for fiqh mm. or you can use this Hadith for uh, like other purposes. Yeah, so now you go and read it. How do you, how will you know if that particular Hadith is gonna be acted upon or not? Do you know that the hadith might be uh, abrogated or not? Do you know that the hadith might be muhkam or um, um, mukhtalif? You will not know these things. Or maybe the hadith is mutashabi, right? And then you're going to be acting something which has been abrogated. Yeah? So these are all the dangers. So then you have to follow someone who knows better, okay? And uh, as you can see, I just wanted to explain, you know, all the details and how vast this field is. So you just, you know, better just uh, either just go uh, and, and learn uh, sitting in front of a scholar or just uh, for the sake of your, like, um, relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just uh, be away from. That's the safest way. Assalamu alaikum.